Well, this is our second week in this series, Adam and Eve. Last week we talked about men and uh, struggles that they have and directions that they need to go. And the ladies were very kind and polite last week and not agreeing with me and elbowing the men in the room, the uh, waiting for their turn. So ladies, today is your turn. I don't know if you're going to be thankful for it or not, but we'll find out in a little bit. The, uh, in this series, Adam and Eve will be alternating back and forth, a message towards men and a message towards ladies, although I do think the application today especially could work either way. Uh, but it's not specifically about couples or relationships or marriage or parenting, but we are starting with the... Uh, launching point of the idea of Adam and Eve, and yeah, believe they're real people, because Jesus did. Uh, But you know there's more women on the planet than men? You ever wonder why that is? And the life expectancy for women almost always outlasts the life expectancy for men. So I did some exhaustive research on the internet, and I found out why. Is the PowerPoint live, guys? PowerPoint ready, guys, up top? Is the, I'm not sure that it is. I'm clicking. I'm not getting anything. I sure hope our clicker's happy today. May I try again? Thank you. There we go. This is just some of the reasons why it might be possible <laughs> that uh, women outlive men. Again, this was exhaustive research. <laughs> women outlive men. Pretty, pretty obviously. Guys, this is not good for our pride at all, is it? And yeah, 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 yeah. What was missing from all those photos, ladies? Anybody? What was missing from all those photos? Women. Women. There were no women in those photos. Common sense as well. Common sense as well. I asked for some research this past week. I sent a couple posts out on Facebook, on uh, uh, my Facebook, maybe the church Facebook, as well as uh, SEK Buy, Sell, and Trade, because it's got 20,000 people on it. And I asked ladies, ladies, the hardest thing about being a woman is... Because obviously I'm not an expert on women. I have not been one, nor do I plan on being one in the near future, unlike Bruce Jenner. Oh, my goodness. That's just, he was on my Wheaties box in the mid-70s. <laughs> the, uh, anyway, so I figured I could come from my own knowledge of women, or I could ask the experts. So here's some of the responses that I got. Hardest thing about being a woman is working outside the home and cleaning and cooking and running kids' places and trying to spend time with friends, etc. Feeling as if everything falls on you. Too much on your plate, and no one else can do it without you. Thinking that I have to live up to society's expectations of women is difficult. The hardest thing about being a woman is trying to meet the standards set by society of the perfect family, perfect looks, working full-time, normal housework, parenting, activities. Trying to be the best spiritual leader, wife, mom, cook, chauffeur, grandma, everything. I like this quote. There isn't enough time in the day to do all the things and feel like we did them well. Am I resonating? Hope so. One of the hardest things is society's idea that women are still not as valued as men. Make less money for the same jobs, expected to work, clean, raise children's perfect relationships. All those expectations. Being expected to do it all. This person isn't from the church. This person came off of the, uh, from uh, uh, the SEK Buy, Sell, and Trade. For example, the woman who would love nothing more than to be a stay-at-home mom and her housewife, but economy and society in general expects her to have a job and be ambitious about it and to keep things up at home and manage the social life and much, much more. Last one. Hardest struggle I have right now is to try and juggle everything. Being a mom, wife, work, time for God, church, fitness, meal planning, laundry, cleaning, keeping up with activities. Man, she had no problem coming up with a list. Trying to find time from extended family. I think she meant trying to find find time for extended family, not trying to find time from extended family. (laughs) And balancing the family budget, it's a lot to try and manage. And then both the men and women chimed in. Also, understanding and dealing with all the emotions that come with being a lady, which are different than from being a guy. And the struggle seems to be in in looking at all that and trying to keep all of it together and all those plates spinning, trying not to make sure that the emotional doesn't overrule the spiritual. Now, it might be awkward hearing that come from a man. It's easy for you to say. Well, man, we have a different and opposite problem. We let the rational overrule the spiritual. And that gets us in dumb situations. And on the flip side, for ladies, when the emotional overrules the spiritual, in either case, the spiritual is getting overruled. And whenever we make decisions with just our emotions or just our thinking caps and our rational, we're going to end up in a spot that we don't need to be. So how do we get the emotional, not to submit to the rational, ladies, but how do we get the emotional to submit to the spiritual? How do we get that? How do we do that? One, we need to start by being on the alert. Being on the alert and realize that we have an enemy that wants to take us down 
And he started with your mother. Not your mother, everyone's mother, Eve. Eve. Something to keep in mind in Genesis, ladies. God created the male and female. He didn't just create male. In Genesis 2, before a woman was created, God said, this isn't good. This isn't good. This was good, this was good, this was good. See this guy, he's all alone. This is not good. It wasn't good till you showed up. It wasn't good till the feminine gender was created. Let's pick it up in Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. Satan continues to lie. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, three things he tells Eve. Your eyes will be opened. You'll be like God. You'll know good and evil. And when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and she ate it. Then she gave some to her low-life husband who was standing there and did nothing to protect her, and he ate it too. Three things that Eve, this is not part of your notes, three things that Eve didn't know that even existed until Satan brought it before her. She didn't even know she didn't have these things. And all of a sudden, she apparently needs these things because this guy is telling her that he, she needs these things. And she's going to have to have these things, apparently, to be whole and complete, according to the voice that's speaking to her. Satan says, you should desire this. You should desire this. Because your relationship, ladies, and your identity with God is not enough. You need this too. And your relationship and your identity with this husband uh, you have, it's not enough. You need this too. And your relationship and identity and who God made you to be is not enough. You're also going to have to have this. And, and this is good. You'll really like this. And the emotional trumped the spiritual. Satan tells Eve, you're not good enough until you have this. You have to have this to be good enough. And that's the one lie that every woman must battle. If you have your notes, go ahead and pull them out this morning. If not, lift your hand up, we'll get you a bulletin. The one lie. Every woman must battle. And I chose the word battle carefully because I'm not sure you ever really defeat it on this side of eternity, but we battle it. I'm not good enough. It's a lie. It's a lie, and it started in the garden. Now, ladies, knowing most of you decently, I don't believe you've had a discussion with a snake in the backyard over an apple tree. But he still lies, and he still tempts us. And he still tempts us in areas that we try to find our identity in. And so based on what I saw a lot of ladies write down, as well as what seems to be common knowledge, a couple areas that uh, the enemy might be tempting you to say, I'm not good enough in that area. Number one, appearance. Appearance. Help me understand, ladies, because I'm not positive on this one. True or false? It's not about looking pretty, but feeling pretty. True or false? Both? All right. Because sometimes you find out if you tell a woman she's beautiful, but if she doesn't feel beautiful, it's hard to be received. Because the culture is constantly telling you, is my appearance good enough? We had 90 plus beautiful women in this building for this if gathering, but maybe none of them will ever make the magazine cover. That does not disqualify them from being beautiful at all. But someone's going to tell them, you still need more to be good enough. As you are, you're still not good enough. You need something else to be good enough. And that's hard. It's a struggle for the emotional to, to, to be surrendered to the spiritual. Another area that ladies mentioned that they feel pressure in to be good enough and meet society's expectation is in the house or homemaking or, or the family. I've had, heard my wife say, the house is an extension of me. Another true or false question for you, ladies. Does the housework ever get done? In researching this, I read across one story of some lady that went OCD on the laundry one day. She just did everything. Boom, 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 boom. Got it all done. It's all folded. It's all put away. Then she looked at her family, and they were wearing clothes. <laughs> I'm going, what do you do? Institute a naked Thursday or something? I don't think so. Now, you may be a fan of Pinterest. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not much on Pinterest. Uh, but, and this is a rhetorical question. No shout out and answer. I don't think Pinterest is from Satan necessarily. But is it a help? Or is it an unrealistic hindrance? Because it might be both. It might be both. 
Are you familiar with these uh, nailed it photos? Uh huh. <laughs> and I love Cookie Monster. <laughs> but that just looks gross. I mean, here's what somebody else did. Man, I saw this. I can do this. <laughs> Note to Grandpa, you can get your dentures back when we're done eating. <laughs> and then lastly, everyone loves minions, right? <laughs> Unless they look like Funyuns. Is it ever good enough? Is it ever really good enough? We see all that. Hey, I can do that. My goodness. And it's different. It's got to be different for ladies, I'm assuming. Because if I see someone run a four-minute mile, I'm going, maybe I can run an eight-minute mile. And I don't feel bad that I can't run a four-minute mile. It hits me differently. But someone made an attempt at that. And before they posted it, maybe they didn't post it. Maybe their enemy did. Before they posted it, it may have crushed them. See, you're just not good enough. You better go ahead and do what I'm telling you to do. You better go ahead and grab this, too. And no hidden agenda today. It's the same agenda as last week. I'm hoping and was praying this morning. Literally, I printed off every lady's name out of our database and prayed over your name this morning as we walked around the chairs. Every single one. And believing that when we close the message up, I'm going to give you a simple challenge to come down and pray. Men, we're going to challenge you not to come down and pray over these ladies, but to fill this place with worship while they're praying. And I'll have two very short, simple prayers to encourage you to pray. But it's hard for the spiritual to rule over the emotional when the culture is telling you your house has to be good. What about your kids? What about kids and family? From what I understand in looking at it, many ladies feel that their ch child's behavior is indicative of their performance as a woman or as a mother. Is that absolutely true? No, it does not mean that if you have a bad kid that you were a bad mom or if you have a good kid you were a great mom. But do you feel that way? And if you feel that way, and it's probably real. Some of you are parents here today, and your children have rebelled. Your children have not done well. And you feel like a horrible parent. God had some kids that didn't turn out too well. Remember Adam? Remember Eve? They rebelled. He's not a horrible parent. Neither are you. Neither are you. When we ask ourselves, are my kids good enough? The rational answer might be, yes, my kids are good enough. But do we feel like they're good enough? When all culture is saying they have to be able to do this, 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 so I can feel good about my kids and feel good about what I've done. It's hard to let the spiritual rule over our feelings when our feelings might be misleading us. Next, relationships. As single women sometimes seem to treat singleness as a sickness, or at least all their friends do. They shouldn't treat it as a sickness. Would you remind yourself, ladies, that if you're not married right now, your Savior was single? One is not a fraction. One is a whole number, if you remember your math back from elementary school. I mean, I just want to slap people when, at a family reunion. No, so you dating anybody? Uh, no. And there was, oh, I'm sorry. As if it's a curse not to be dating anybody. What's up with that? What's up with that? Or you, I could line up ladies for you again and again that will tell you marriage isn't going to make that problem go away. Marriage isn't going to make any loneliness go away. Marriage isn't going to, quote, unquote, fix it. Some may be struggling. Well, if I was only smarter or funnier, or skinnier, or if I just had more because I must not be good enough because my relationships aren't perfect. Maybe if I was just more godly, or maybe if I didn't have such high standards and I lowered my standards, I could get some more attention. Warning, if you lower your standards to get some attention, you will find a guy willing to do anything to get some action. And when the guy who wants to find some action meets someone who's willing to lower their standards to get some attention, fire happens, but it's not inside the fireplace, and it will burn your house down. A dangerous place to be. Some of you here today may be married before and not married now. And you feel like damaged goods when you're still the daughter of God. Some of you today, ladies, may be here in a mismatched marriage. You are here and your husband is not. And you think, if I was just good enough and read my Bible more or did this more, that he might turn around. Maybe that's not the answer. Maybe it's totally up to him whether he's going to follow Christ and you're doing all that you can, and you actually are good enough, but it's someone selling you a piece of junk that's telling you you're not 
good enough, but that's going to be a hard struggle to overcome. It's going to be hard to have the spiritual take authority over the emotional when all the culture is saying something different. Lastly, on this list, and I'm sure, ladies, you could add to this list like crazy, career. Maybe you want to work, and, but it's not going as well as you hoped, or maybe you do work outside the home but wish you didn't, or, or maybe you want to work outside the home and you wonder what you're missing out on by all those ladies who are. Could it just possibly be another plate that you're trying to keep spinning? And another thing to add to that list, am I getting it all done? Am I getting it all done? Am I getting it all done to the level that people expect me to? I heard this said, and I don't know if this is accurate, and if it's not, you can tell me later. I've heard you can describe nearly every woman with two words. Tired and frustrated. Tired. They can't keep up their identity with all these, all these things, all these things on the screen, and you could add three more. They can't keep up their identity and all those things and frustrated because they feel like they should be doing better and it should be easier. If you look at that list, they will never all be lined up perfectly. Like the mom who looked at her children after the laundry was done to find out her kids were wearing clothes. And then this lie comes up and says, it reminds us that we're just not good enough. So what do we do with feelings that lie to us? I lost my timer, so i got to be careful here. What do we do with feelings that are not telling us the truth? Do we, and don't write this down, do we repress them? Do we repress them and just push them down? No, no, we don't want to repress them. Don't write this down either. Do we refuse them and just say, I just choose not to believe I'm feeling that way? No, 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 I, I just refuse them and discount them and ignore them? No, do we resign to them and say, okay, I'll just submit to my feelings and take them wherever they lead me? I'm not sure we want to do that either. So what do we do with these feelings? Number one, what if we reviewed them? What if we reviewed them? Scripture says in 1 John 4, let me back up, 1 John 3 has a context of, about our heart and about attitudes and about our thoughts. And it says this, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit. And based on the context, I think it's safe to put in the word heart or thoughts or feelings, but test them, review them. What do we do with feelings that lie to us? What if we reviewed them? What if we resisted them? Not all feelings. Not all feelings are bad. Not in the slightest. Some guys need to get better in touch with their feelings for sure. But the enemy floods you with darts of despair, which is a feeling, doubt, discouragement, lies that you're not good enough. What do we do when that happens? Resist an enemy. Do you realize that Eve did not have to respond to the serpent in the garden? She didn't have to say anything. She didn't have to do anything. Resist. She didn't have to take them on. Shouldn't have to win an argument. Just walk away. Just walk away. And lastly, what do we do with feelings that lie to us? Replace them. Replace them. Whatsoever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable. Think about those things. Think about those things. So if the enemies lie to us, ladies, well, I just called myself a lady. If the enemies lie to us is that we're not good enough, what truth do we come back with? I just have two very simple truths to share with you. And these are the truths I'm hoping and challenging you, I guess, to bring to the altar and pray. Number one, in Christ, I am priceless. May I challenge you to say that with me out loud, ladies only, on three, one, two, three. In Christ, I am priceless. You have unlimited value. And a lady and a woman who doesn't view herself as priceless not only will be open to abuse herself, she'll be open to allow others to abuse her as well. Psalm 139 says this, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place in the womb. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. You are priceless. And some of you already have the enemy's voice in your head going, Yeah, that's true about your daughter. That's true about your mom. That's true about your sister. But that's not true about you because you disqualified yourself because you got junk in your past. That means you've messed it up. He's lying. He's lying. He's lying. Every woman who has a problem in their past, and many of them it has to deal with situations that are maybe from sexual in nature, from mistakes that other people made or mistakes that you made, Satan hits you hard with what you used to be. That's why we're not just saying, I'm priceless, I'm priceless. In Christ, I'm priceless. Truth number two, in Christ, oops, that's the second verse. In Christ, I am complete. In Christ, I am complete. Ladies, would you say that with me on three, one, two, three? In Christ, 
I am complete. Does it seem like on that list it's hard to keep all those things going, career and work and home and, and relationships, that one of those things might be falling apart? He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. I would like to bring a simple challenge to you today, ladies, that it's probably not a good idea to stand in the shadow of a blood-stained, blood-stained cross and point to Jesus and say, I am not valuable. When his blood is dripping, that's probably not the time to say, I'm not good enough, because it's a lie. 